Good morning everyone. My name is Laura Stranks and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Thanks for joining me this morning. Um, a little bit chilly here in Brisbane, but not too bad. I think it's going to get worse, but um, just a couple of things about me or my groups and pages. Um, I have a Facebook page called Cards by Laura. Um, in there you'll see lots of my um, cards, just normal cards, fancy fold cards, um, lots to look at in there. You can case any of those if you wish. Um, you can follow along in that Facebook page as well. Um, I've also got a Facebook group. It's um, a private group that you need to apply to um, join. Uh, it's called Laura's Craft Room Tips and Tutorials. It's a large group. Um, if you do wish to join, there's um, a couple of questions there that you need to answer. One is why you wish to join the group, um, whether it be that you like what I do or whether it just be I'm, I do a lot of crafting. I'd like to see some uh, more ideas, um, whatever your reason for joining. Also, the other question is um, that you agree to the rules. Um, the rules are fairly simple, that you be nice and kind and um, go along with what's in the group. If you're not interested in the, in what's in there, um, you're welcome to take yourself back out of the group any time. Um, if you're watching my YouTube channel today, it's called Creative Gems. If it's your first time watching and you like what you see, I'd love you to give me the thumbs up. And um, if you wish to subscribe, just hit the little subscribe button. And also from there you can go in and there's a little bell. If you hit the bell, that will notify you when I do my videos. I do record my videos and I um, post them up at 9am on a Monday morning. So this is this week's card. I'll just give you a quick look. It's called a trifold shutter card. It's been around for a little while. There's quite a few variations of it. Um, stands up nicely on your um, table or wherever you display your cards. This is one of the cards we did at a retreat that I hosted here at my home um, in May, just last month, um, and the girls loved it. We prepped everything for them, so it's not difficult to do. I'm going to show you how to do the scoring and cutting today, and I've prepped all my pieces as I usually do, so if you'd like to have a watch, and then you can craft along um, later on by yourself, or if you wish if you've got your um, pieces handy, you can craft along with me. Um, as usual, I have done... Oh, there is a back section there where you can write your, um, your little message on the back. And I shall show you all the pieces that you need. I'll just put that one aside for a minute. This is my um, materials that you'll need for the card. Um, I will post these into the description box of this video today. The PDF for this will be in my large group, which is Laura's Craft Room Tips and Tutorials. So if you need the full PDF um, of instructions how to assemble, then you'll need to join the group if you're not already in the group. A lot of you probably will be by now. Um, so, and the I also put the link for this video in that group as well. I do a live video on a Saturday morning in that group. Um, where we craft along together and um, the PDF and the, the video is pinned in there um, so you can hop along with that. So we shall get started. I'll go through these pieces with you. My base, I've chosen Melon Mambo with this because I'm using a new DSP that's not available to everybody. Um, I just thought I'd show you what it looks like and it's the base is 10.5 by 5.5, and, and I'll show you the scoring on that one in a minute. That's in the Melon Mambo. And then I've teamed it with Pretty in Pink. Um, now, I have got a chart on the PDF. There's this little chart here in a bigger um, version, so you can find out where all your pieces go. So this is um, in order down here. Uh, A, which is front and back of the mats. Um, they're in the white, which I'll show you from here. It's two at the front here, the outside ones, and two at the back. 
So they measure five and a quarter by one and a half. That's those two. And also the back two, which is those two there. And I've already stamped those on the back as well. So there's four of those. And then the DSP that goes on the top of those. I'll just get the paper out and show you. Um, it's a new paper that I earned. My... It, it went on your sales from April, in April, from last year to this year. Um, so if you exceeded your sales um, from in the 12-month period, from last April to this April, um, then you received this free pack of paper. I was quite surprised. I didn't think I would, um, but I did. So <laughs> it was good. Um, it's the same as the other um, blue. There's a blue one in the same thing. Um, I can't remember the name of the blue one at the moment, but it's exactly the same patterns. Very pretty, but it's in pink. It's in Melon Mambo and pretty in pink and I think um, petal, uh, yeah, petal pink and pretty in pink and Melon Mambo. But it's very nice paper, so I'm starting to use that. So I've chosen one of the patterns out of that for this. And these are the DSP that go on the front section here which is these two down this side. Uh, they're five inches by one and a quarter. So that's those two. Um, B is these four here. There's four uh, little ones in there. They measure one and a half by one and a quarter. And that's these ones here. I've chosen an alternate pattern for those. It's a softer color on those. Uh, the mats at the back are the one and a half by one and a quarter. And the ones on the front are one, the DSP is one and a quarter by one inch. And there's four of those. So that's that one. And then C, top and bottom here are these two here. I've gone back to the first pattern. Uh, three and a quarter by one and a quarter is the mats in the white. And then the DSP on the top is three by one. And there's two of each of those. Um... D is just one here. It's this section over the side. This is the one I've embossed. Oh no, this is the one. That's this one. Sorry. Um, this one here. I will show you on here. That goes there. Um, it's two and a quarter by one and a half. And the DSP on the top is two by one and a quarter. So that's that one. And then the last one here. And... There's two of these in the mats. One is over this side, this section here. We'll go from here again. That section there and the mat on that one there. This one here is just the white by itself. And it is uh, three and a quarter by two and a quarter. And then the embossed piece, I've embossed it with um, this eyelet embossing folder, 3D embossing folder. It measures three by two, and there's one of those, um, and just the straight piece. I've stamped that with, um, I've used a couple of different stamp sets in this, and that top one is from this Irresistible Blooms. It's just a little spotty pattern there that I've chosen for that, just to tie in with everything. We'll put that one aside, and that's all the pieces. Then I've got my greeting and a bit of decoration as well uh, and then two of these these first ones here where you've cut four of two of those will be your um, writing panels at the back which we explained earlier so that's those two there so we shall put that aside and I shall get my trimmer now my greeting I've chosen I'll go through this now while we've got it out my greeting is from not that one this one here, wishing you the brightest birthday from Cheers Cheerful Daisies. You can choose any greeting you like. I've chosen a mixture of different stamp sets. Um, my butterflies are coming out of this, um, my favourite set at the moment, sketched butterflies. There's dies that match up with these. And these ones I've stamped with this big one here and these two here. And then there's dies to cut them out. We've got a few spares in there. So that's the set there with your dies that line up. And you've got these detail dies as well, um, which I think there's one in another set somewhere. I'll put it aside. So that's those. Just 
put that back away. We'll put all that aside. We don't need that just yet. And we'll get on to the cutting and scoring. So to start off, you'll need your um, trimmer or scorer. Scorer to start if you haven't got a Stampin' Up! trimmer, which has got both. And um, then just do your scoring plate if you've got a scoring plate. But you will need to do a bit of cutting. The base with your long side at the top. We're going to score at one and three quarters, which is that one there. Make sure yesterday I had a class here and I was doing one of the cards showing the ladies because I always say I put my cutting blade to the bottom so that it's out of the road and I don't grab it by mistake. Um, and what did I do? I First time in a long, long time, I grabbed it by mistake and cut my piece instead of scoring it. They all had a laugh at me. Um, Three and a half is your second score. Seven inches, which you'll need your arm out. And we'll go to seven inches. It's fairly easy scoring and cutting on this one. And then eight and three quarters, which is over there. Now, turn it um, 90 degrees, just one way. And with your left edge on the one and a half inch that's this side one and a half inch mark there and you're going and i'll need to stand up for this so i can see directly over the top um cut from the first score line to the last score line which is one and three quarters to eight and three quarters so we'll go did i do that first i'll just double check yes one and three quarters i'm just double checking <laughs> I always doubt myself. Uh, left edge on one and a half, which is there. And we're going to cut so we can leave the scoring blade up the top. Cut with that up first from this first score line, which is there. Cut from one and three quarter to eight and three quarter. Just the first score line to the last score line that way all the way through um, rotate it 180 degrees and do exactly the same so the left edge will be on um, one and a half i'll double check my thing again one and a half one and a half and then cut from the first score line which is there. If you're a little bit short, better to be a little bit short than too far. You can always just snip it with your scissors, which I shall go back up there because it's quite a bit shorter. We'll just go up a fraction. That is better. So that is all the cutting you need to do. Now the folding, there's a certain way you need to fold and I'll bring this my sample card back in. Um, the first score line is at one and three quarter. That goes into a mountain fold. So we'll fold it back this way. And the last score line at eight and three quarters will be a valley fold. So as you, um, that's supposed to be, oh no, that's, they're both. one comes forward it's been used a fair bit that's why it's not sitting the way it should but yes it goes valley fold that way I think once it's um, all pinched and folded it'll be fine so the two top ones here um, these are valley folds the first one here and the top the bottom one here the two bottom ones the middle one will come up into a mountain so just pinch them as you go and they will work their way so you can pull that across that will go over that way and then this one here will be into a mountain fold and this one here will be a mountain and that one will go into a valley so just keep working it 
across. Make sure we've got it right. It will eventually lie itself down. So you've got a mountain fold and then two valley folds with a mountain in the centre. This one here, um, there's a piece that goes right across that so you don't need to fold that at all. Um, this one over here is a mountain and a mountain and down in here is a valley and this end one is a valley so it will sit up like that. And that is all you need to do. So we can put all our pieces on. I will show you in the bigger version of where all your pieces go. And I've got your scoring measurements down here. Um, the cutting measurements aren't there, but they're in the PDF. So that's already in your um, in the PDF, all the instructions of how to do it. I'm just going to keep folding that so it's all good. And then we can just put all our pieces on. We will do the mats on the back first. Well, we we'll start at the bottom, and I've put I've stamped these little butterflies down here, and I've also put I'm not sure if you can see the shine on those. I've put I've wig a cellar over the top of them, just to give them a little bit of shine. My liquid glue and my silicon mat. We shall proceed to put all these pieces together, and you'll see how nice it looks. I've got a friend coming over in a couple of a week and a bit. Um, she's going. We're going to craft together. That's our play day we have every couple of months. And I said we'll make something with this new paper. So we'll see what we can come up with. We've got a couple of ideas what we want to do. We just sit and play. She's she works at a school in the office at a school, and um, she's on school holidays. So. She'll be able to, I'll make sure I get these the right way. So that they're both with the butterflies at the bottom. And that's correct. Just keep checking, make sure you've got your pieces the right way. Flip these over. And then these are the two that will go on the front. I wasn't sure how this paper would look. It's quite bright. With the melon mambo, I, I was surprised. Oh, uh, I suppose they designed it ages ago. Um, they could have had the um, the new colour petunia pop. Oh, I'm going to make sure my leaves. There's leaves on this. If you've got directional paper, make sure you cut your direction the right way. Yes, I've got my butterflies the right way, and these have got trees, um, pink trees. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a pink tree, although in autumn we get some close to pink. We'll put those two on the outside first. And then we have these little ones. We've got four little ones. Uh, that way. Now I've got this a certain way as well, so that the pattern is all the same way. I've got the the little arrows facing downwards on all of them. I like to prep as much as I can beforehand so that. I'm not interrupting your day too much. When you've got time, you can watch the video again and get all your pieces ready to start. The measurements will be there in the description box. I've been doing YouTube now for, must be close to 18 months at least. I really enjoy it. A couple of times I've had to edit a few things but not too often. I try and be careful and do the right thing if I've made a... That's the beauty of recording. If you've made too big a mistake, I just stop it and do it again. <laughs> I don't like it too out of whack with people. I'd rather show you the correct way to start with. I know everyone makes mistakes, but 
sometimes they're a little bit too much looking good so far and now we have these two which are up here and here with my trees up the right way as I was saying before with directional paper make sure you've got um, whatever you've got directional is facing the right way so that one will go on there the trees are up the right way and the bottom one fairly simple cut on this one when you cut your cut compared to some of them that are a lot more complicated that's good looking good so far let's try it that way just keep maneuvering it so it ends up correct and then I've got one of these which I've got the pattern running this way I cut all of these pretty much out of the same strip um, I think they were one and a quarter or one inch wide and that way we ended up with the pattern running all the same way so this one here as you can see the, the little um, arrowy thing is running all together down the piece I think I fluked some of it because I didn't realize it was going to be all like that to line up it worked out quite well this one here will go on here and I'm doing them all flat because I've got some but a big butterfly to put over on this side for my decoration I've also got some embellishments I'm going to put on the girls in my big group I did post all the photos of the cards we did at the retreat and they've been asking for videos or at least the PDF. I didn't post the. Oh, I did. Um, no, I just posted photos. I didn't put the PDFs up for these yet, and um, so I'm just going through a few at a time, um, doing videos for them, so they can see how they were done. That is pretty in pink cardstock. That one, and this one here. Um, I'm going to put my decorations on first. And I thought I would put this up the top. And I'm going to pop it up on dimensionals. It's quite chunky inside an envelope, but um, you probably use it to hand to someone or pay extra postage if it's, um, if it's a bit too thick to post. Put some extra ones on here. There's nothing to go underneath these. They're just going straight flat on there. My hands are a bit cold this morning, so they're not working as well. So I shall put this at the top, pretty much centered in there. And then my butterflies, wherever I put them, underneath everything, underneath my papers. This big one I've got for over here. There should be another one there somewhere. There it is, hiding. I've just got these two to pop in here and I'm going to pop them up on some dimensionals as well. And right here. Try not to get it hanging over the edge too much because you'll see it, it'll end up on these folds. So I'll just put one in the center there. And then we'll curl him up a bit. Oh, we're down here, not over there. I'm going to just pop it over in there. And the same with this one. And go this way. Like so. Give him a bit of a curl. And then that will sit, it'll straddle across, across, across that other panel there. It should just go to the DSP and then it lines flush with that um, score line there. Actually, I might put it, because this one here I've got flush with the DSP. Yes, I'll do it exactly the same. 
and some dimensionals on that one. Oh no, actually we're doing that flat because I've already got one layer of dimensionals. So we'll pop that in there. Put some glue on the back of that one. And then I've got my other big butterfly to go onto the embossed piece. I'll put this lined up with the dimensionals, with the um, edge of the DSP, like so. Give it a bit of a press down, and that will end up the front of your card, like so. And this one here I'm going to put flat because it's going to be in underneath the others. Um, we might use some glue dots because that will give it a tiny, tiny bit of height, but not too much. Just curl them up a little bit. Put a couple in the center. Glue dots are super strong if you want something. Ribbon, I always use my glue dots on ribbon. Glue doesn't work on ribbon. So we've got those. We'll go this way with this one. No one's sitting there. So we end up with a three, the, the three, I like odd numbers on, on things. So we've got the three butterflies on there. And then I've got some embellishments to put on. Just keeping, keep giving this a press down with your bone folder to make it sit nice and flat. And I've chosen some 20, 20, 24, 26 in colour gems, shimmer gems they are. And I'm going to use this pretty in pink on these. Um, I might put some on the greeting. We do three across there. And the bigger ones, they won't show up too much on the, on the um, butterflies, I don't think. I'll just put a couple. We'll do one on each. Laura loves her bling embellishments. Very pretty. And that is it. Not too difficult. And it's got a bit of a wow. So it will sit up however you like with the with the folds. Uh, that one there should be forward. So we've got that one and we've got that one. And then sitting flat like so. Go that way. That's it from me. Thank you for joining me this morning if you're a regular watcher. Um, if it's your first time, um, love you to have, put a little comment in and tell me where you're from. And I shall catch you all again next Monday morning at 9am. Bye for now.